Hello my soccer universe and I am very happy to be able to bring you another uh, conversation with a fellow collector um, this uh, for uh, this Friday. Um, we're talking about my conversation uh, which happened two weeks ago. Uh, it took me a whole lot of uh, the editing and more on that a little bit later. Uh, I had a conversation with Idris from uh, the YouTube channel Amour du Maillot. Um, which you can of course uh, find and I would strongly suggest you subscribe to him even though most of his videos are in French if you have just a little bit knowledge in French like I do I can actually follow his, most of his content really really well but he has also the occasional English video in there and even if not there's always some really 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 nice uh, jerseys shown it is himself is I mean Let's put it that way. If you thought my collection is large, Idris is about three times as large. And uh, what I really um, admire in him is that he is uh, really a kid nerd in the sense he only at the moment uh, is looking at match uh, issued or match worn uh, shirts because he really, really likes uh, you know, the, uh, to talk about the technology and to uh, explore that. So he is uh, even more of a kid nerd than I am. And that's why I knew he's kind of a natural starting point for really having another conversation. Um, the last one that I had, my first one, I was invited. This is not the first time that I invited someone to come on board and it really seemed to be a very, very, very natural starting point for me. Um, I should also say that I'm in a regular communication with him. We are sending back and forth messages. Uh, where we talk not only about soccer and soccer shirts, although for some reason we almost always end up talking about the 2002 World Cup. There's a little bit of that one in here too, but not too much this time around, although I was prepared <laughs> for that. Uh, but uh, we, you can talk with him too, uh, about many, many, many things. He's a great guy uh, to have as a kind of... Uh, friend uh, correspondence and whatever so uh, it is uh, really really uh, cool to have him um, as you will see the talk is one hour 45 minutes long and it felt like we just got started so in many ways um, we did it over a zoom call where unfortunately uh, at least for the at, when we started my um, internet connection was not good enough, so I had to, had to actually start the phone camera, take my video off, have his video. I also, this was the first time that I actually made a private Zoom call. Uh, so far, all the Zoom calls that, 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 that I made uh, were never being recorded, so I recorded that one. The problem is, uh, in the options, is I, we, we are not uh, next to each other. It is always the person that's talking is full screen. And then, you know, uh, if you know Zoom, as soon as another person is a little bit louder, it sw uh, switches over. So sometimes you hear me just saying, uh-huh, or taking a sip out of my bottle and the screen switches over to me. Uh, sorry for that, but that's the way uh, it uh, went. I had to, and the reason why it took me so long to uh, release it one, because every time since the Zoom recording did not record me for uh, the first half of the conversation and I had to splice in kind of the uh, video from the phone which was a whole lot of work I gotta say so next time uh, hopefully we have a better option there uh, also the zoom recording is of course not an HD and whatever uh, it was actually a rather small vi vi video so I kind of laid my what what I have my background and that the video is a little bit uh, smaller um, I think the sound is throughout really, 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 really good. The picture quality, of, as I said, it's a Zoom call. I don't have a great internet connection, um, but I think if you have it, I think I could have released this as a podcast because we're not showing too many jurors, we're just really just talking. And the stuff we're talking about is also far reaching. We are going, you know, we talk a whole, the first uh, half is a whole lot of World Cup and a little bit Euros, just general. 
uh, we go uh, not only soccer. We have many other sports in in in, in Idris is a huge fan of rugby. Uh, we both have also NHL jerseys in our collection. So it's a little bit talk about that. We uh, you know reminisce about past World Cups and what we thought. And I actually always find it interesting because. He watches World Cups uh, coming from a country where, that, where uh, the national team, he's from France, is actually usually winning. I come from a country where I'm happy if the national team even takes part and is a perennial loser in that sense. So uh, while I claim I maybe have a, for most World Cups a little bit more of a neutral perspective, uh, it's also interesting to see his perspective because uh, I really, really love um, hearing that how did he experiences World Cups. Also there we have a slight age difference so there are certain World World Cups that he um, ha has seen when I was already a young adult and he was still a, a boy. So uh, that's also uh, always fun how these things cloud your mind. I think I've talked enough about it. I will try now. I have not done it yet, but I, I, I will try to also put a little bit chapter marks in um, to kind of guide the calm conversation. But all I can say is enjoy. It is just cut at points where the camera went out or when one of us left the room. Other than that, it's unabridged, unedited, uncut. Uh, you get it all, warts and all. But I think it was a great conversation. And I'm willing to say this was only part one. So yeah, without further ado, enjoy. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, hello. I actually dressed up for you. Yeah, With I see that. I'm, I, was, I, I was like fingers crossed because I was like, okay, I'm not picking a con shirt for my setting today because I did an interview last, which was a part of which was released last week, you know, the one I sent you. And I was like, it's all about Caen. And I'm wearing, and I have like three Caen shirts. <laughs> I already have the scarf behind. Yes. Today, I'm going to pick three shirts that have a quite a meaning for me, but not Caen, just for yes. once. Is this a player issue for us? Yeah, it's a match one. Great. It's it's a match one, but it's really, it's really, um, it's a really weird one because there is no star here yeah. and no number here. Uh -huh. It was won by a, I, I think I think it was a under seventeen something like that, okay. um, mm -hmm. and uh, I couldn't I really couldn't find any picture of that. But it's the equipment technology. Um, I don't know if you can see it here. You know yep. the, the yellow tag. Mm -hmm. um, I bought it. I don't know uh, two years ago. I think. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I love it on the second hand page. Yeah, I love it too because it's, if not the best Adidas shirt for France, it's one of the, of the, the, the three best shirts. To me, it's probably, I, I have thought about it, but it's probably my favorite because, um, mm. yeah, the 84 and the 82, okay, they are kind of special. But when I think about France, uh, in my generation, I know I was very disappointed of the 98 that they just copied the 84 design <laughs> in a way. I, I remember that. And then they came out with this one and I like the clean look and a little bit white. The only thing, the color could use a full French flag. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I think it's on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, it's here. Um, I, I do agree because the 1998 is now legendary in France, of course. Um, but aesthetically speaking, I think it's a bit tacky. Yes. Uh, whereas this one is, is kind of classy. Absolutely. Um, I, Absolutely. I love this one. You could, you could, back in the days, you could get it confused with a rugby shirt. Yeah, I, could, I can imagine, yeah. No, it's it's absolutely stunning, and I, I absolutely love that you know there's the white on there. You have a touch of red. It's all I expect from a French shirt. I yeah, it's perfect. So I don't have mine here now, but I, to me this is one of my absolute favorites. What I also notice is that the rooster is a little bit wider than on the replica. Yes, it's, it's heat printed. It's heat printed as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, so on the on the on the, the the player issue shirts, I I'm I will film uh, tomorrow or in the next few days a video on um, special France shirts 
made by Adidas. Mm-hmm. But beat for Adidas or Nike, I don't know why, but France has always had a special treatment. Um, yep. There was a difference. I mean, you couldn't find it. All the other Adidas teams, even the most premium teams like Argentina or Spain or Germany, the logos were embroidered. So there were technical differences, yeah, yeah. but there was not that specificity with shirts uh, being delivered to the, the, the kit staff without a logo and then you hit print it. It's really weird. And um, I don't know why, but something I have noticed. And Nike did not the same, but did also something different with France. Uh, when they arrived in 2011, like with the junior and futsal teams and all the other teams mm-hmm. uh, having a different shirt, which is a mix between a replica shirt and a player issue shirt. Yeah. I talked mm-hmm. about it in, a, in my videos. And it's really strange. I don't know why France has always had this special treatment from uh, from manufacturers. Um, but yeah, after we started talking about France, what I would like to know is how you got into collecting. Really, I know it has something to do with an Anaheim Ducks shirt. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, uh, the start of my collection, yeah, but the uh, desire to uh, collect stuff were a bit um, earlier. Mm-hmm. It happened. I, I, I totally remember. I remember perfectly uh, the moment when I realized what a shirt was. It was in the playground with my school friends and we were, uh, let me remember, it was just after the 98 World Cup. All my schoolmates were playing football, not me. And there was one in France, we call it recreation, so one break, you know, in the playground, um, where they were like, okay, guys, tomorrow let's all wear a football shirt. And I didn't have any. And so I, I kind of felt excluded, not, you know, not in a bully way, but slightly felt excluded. I was like, yeah, I guys, I don't, I, I don't have any. They were like, yeah, but we do have, let's, let's wear one. And after that, I came back home and I remember saying to my parents, I don't have any football shirts and I would like one. And they were like, but you don't even watch football. You don't even play football. And I was like, yeah, but all my friends at school, I have one. Um, and so a bit of um, water went under the bridges. And I, I remember perfectly in the 2000, 2001 season. Uh, I, so I, I started to follow football a little bit through uh, Lyon, which back then was kind of a, a hype team. Uh, they, yeah. have, they hadn't won any league yet. But 2000, mm-hmm. 2001, they had a cool shirt and my cousin uh, was given one for his birthday. It was the, the one, the Adidas one with the two stripes here in the middle and the pate sponsor, you know, the yellow yeah. pate yeah. sponsor. Do remember that one. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I wanted this one. Well, my parents found it really ugly. And honestly, it's true that it was not that beautiful. Yeah. Uh, now it's iconic, but it was not that beautiful. And so my parents didn't know where to buy a football shirt. So I remember hearing a conversation they had on the phone with a friend of my father who was into football and was like, okay, Idris wants a, a Lyon shirt for his birthday. Where can I get one? So he told him uh, a sports shop. And a bit of time went and I was also into hockey back then and a bit more into hockey than football because my best friend, um, who, is, who is now a professional hockey player in France, uh, mm-hmm. my best friend was, in, was a hockey player already. So we would play roller hockey um, at, at home. And my parents preferred buying me the Mighty Duck shirt. Uh, which they found cooler um, for my birthday. When it was not birthday, it was I was I had great uh, marks at school, and mm-hmm. to actually uh, yeah, it's a reward <laughs> reward me. Yeah, uh, they bought it, and uh, it was a surprise. I remember perfectly. It was a surprise. The, the shirt. I was in my room uh, just before dinner. Uh, my parents called me. Okay, we're going to eat, have dinner. And I went and the shirt was wrapped and it was in my plate. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what is that? Oh, it's a gift for you. Open it. And I opened it and it was the Mighty Dick shirt, which I still have. Um, yeah. And I'm really proud of that. 
so yeah, and the first football shirt that I bought was the the PSG away shirt from 2001 2002, the gray one. The first the, the first year from yeah. Mourinho at PSG. Uh, the one that they own... to, uh, the one that the current third shirt is based on. Um, with the horizontal strap? No, with the the triangle, the kind of triangle shape. Okay. They had the same in black. Okay. Uh, it was 2001-2002, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Ronaldinho's first year. I okay. bought it with my birthday money. So, mm -hmm. yeah, these are the first two shirts that I got. Wow, pretty cool. And it pretty started, cool. yeah, we started when I was, well, uh, 2001. I was nine, and I bought the PSG shirt for my 10th birthday. <laughs> you beat me by three yeah. to four years. <laughs> <laughs> well, my yeah, first... I remember my first shirt, it was not an official shirt, was the, um, because Austria had qualified for the 1990 World Cup. And I remember that I was with my aunt. I mean, my aunts are basically my second set of uh, mothers in a way. Yeah. And, and me and my brother, we always spent summers with them. And I remember this was like a East, I think it must have been an Easter World Cup. Okay. They had the shoe store where they were selling a T-shirt from Puma ah. with the exact same design as the Austria home shirt. And but it was it, it was official from official Puma product. Or, exactly, or but it was all cotton. Yeah. It was all cotton. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I see. I see this kind of thing. I like this kind of thing. I don't collect them, but I think it's a, it's a pretty good option for people who exactly. don't have money. Yeah. Yeah, and so we got that one, and of course, uh, everyone expected when Austria and that preparation was superb. I mean, I think we beat uh, Spain, we beat the Netherlands, we drew one one with Art Argentina. We had a really great pre-World Cup and at the World Cup we stunk it up uh, in typically Austrian fashion. Yeah. Um, so the shirt became very unpopular very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it the, the white one or the red one? The white one. I mean, I love the red one actually better. But I think in my, in my, I, I, I can't really uh, see in my mind the red one, but I perfectly remember the, uh, the, the white one, which is more iconic, I think, with the kind of black shape yes swirling okay i i the I red one was this. red and they had the same shape in white okay let me actually i will try then because i ha i have now all my world cup books i, I will try not with, with with the video maybe i can find it very quickly for you yeah just quickly because that, the audio is perfect now so just yeah, yeah just I, quickly yeah but i'm not sure if i have it uh no, i don't have it in the book i only have the the home shirt, but let's quickly do with the video that I did. Mm -hmm. uh, da, 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 start video. Very quickly. There in the back are all the Austrian players with the shirt. Yeah, I remember this one. That was the the, f the famous penalty shot where uh, I'm stopping again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on. Uh, the famous penalty shot where they actually pull us out. I mean, they lost to Italy only one nil, and then they it every, everyone hinged on playing the Czech Republic, and a back pass by one of our most famous defenders killed us. <sighs> and there's a funny story with that defender. His name is Tony Pfeffer. He played for Austria Vienna most of the time, and he was involved in two really bad things. The one was the back pass that he had, where a penalty resulted from. And the second one was an interview in 99. Austria had to play in Spain on the 27th of March, 99. Famous result, 9-0 to Spain. <laughs> it was at such a point, Spain had just disappointed the World Cup. Austria did really well. I think even a run-up, they beat Switzerland 4-2. And then they went to Valencia and it was all about, yeah, maybe we can get a result and our coach said, yeah, we'll even shave and all that kind of stuff. We just have to avoid to not get concede any goals within 15 in the first 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, it was, I think, already 3-0. <laughs> At half time, it was a 5-0. And then <gasps> the famous interview, they asked uh, that defender, Tony Pfeffer, they asked him, what is happening? What, uh, what's going to happen now? And so on. He said, well, we won't win it by a lot today. <laughs> Oh God! I, I I often blame players who talk too much before games. Yeah, now nah, it, it this was more or less the attitude. 
it was not even meant badly. It was just like a very a statement of, yeah, this is going badly. <laughs> it's, ne it's never meant badly, but mm. in France, in 2002, we had this, you know, Marcel de Sailly saying that he doesn't know any Senegal player. Yeah, um, that's not good. This kind of thing, I'm like, but why do you even speak? I mean, you know that it's going to be, it's typical French, to be honest. Mm. Um, we, we're, we are the best in all sports. We are the best, well, except, except handball, because we're good at handball. But we're, we are the best when nobody expects us to perform. It's not like Germany, uh, which is kind of always there. Yes. Uh, in, it's really Latin. Um, in rugby, it's the same. Uh, 2011, in the World Cup. I remember. I remember. <laughs> English players before the quarterfinals saying France doesn't even deserve to be in the quarterfinals. I'm like, you know that you're going to be kicked in the ass. You know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, you don't. It's as if we, we needed any more motivation. Uh, and it's the same in this year, opposite way. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I felt the Euro 2021 would be like, uh, you know, losing to Switzerland because we were too cocky. Yeah. Uh, and you could see it. You could definitely see yeah. it. I mean, how Pogba cell celebrated 3 1. Uh, they thought it's done and dusted. Yeah. And it, it, I'll be honest, in 2018, we would never have conceded these two goals. After, yes. You know, we'd never have conceded that because we we're too strong in the mind. And we had uh, Samuel Untiti, who back then was one of the most, one of the best defenders in Europe. 100% agree. And honestly, that 2018 team was not expect nobody expected them to win anything before the World Cup. The journalists in France were really tough on them. They were like, "Okay, they don't deserve anything. They don't play well." And I'm like, "Yeah, but that's when we're best." And and and, and in the end, we made it. Uh, it was great, but. I knew that we wouldn't win the Euros and I know that we're not going to win the World Cup at the end of the year because yeah. it's too it's too hard and we, we're not in the in the in the right mood, you know, in the right mindset. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I tend to I mean I'm not sure about the World Cup whether the disaster the Euros is not again fuel, but I know that once you've won it, then the, the hunger is missing. I actually think that there are mm -hmm. other teams that might be more uh, into it or, you know, more desiring it at the moment. But, yeah. you know, um, I to France's credit, they came back at the Nations League final for big time. Oh, man, that was, honestly, that was thrilling. And I'll be honest, I didn't expect the Nations League to bring me so much emotion. And uh, I, I really liked, well, we had many uh, talks about that. But, uh, again, I... I being back from the dead against Belgium, which is yes. get, which is becoming a rival, and which which is one of perhaps the best national team in the in the world, or one or two years ago, but still one of the best. Mm -hmm. And Spain, which is really promising in my opinion, yes, um, it was unbelievable. It was, and Benzema did something great. And actually, players are starting to click if they. Don't forget that one year ago or a few months ago, they were ridiculous. And if they keep that in mind, perhaps they can. But they, it's impossible for... Uh, not only do the world champions uh, struggle in the next World Cup. Exactly, that's uh, the curse. But the, 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 there is the curse. But if you uh, look at it more broadly, I had a thought about that. The last team to actually make it further than the quarterfinals. The last uh, reigning champion to make it past the quarterfinals was Argentina in 1990. Brazil in 1990. Oh. oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, true. But it's two, two teams. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's nothing. Uh, it's, uh, it's really, really hard at the World Cup. Yeah, and they... They, Brazil and Argentina made it to the final. They didn't win, yeah. but it's uh, yeah, it's 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 almost impossible not only to win the World Cup again, but to get far in the World Cup. Absolutely, um, 
it's 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 a uh, it's a pretty big task because you have this big fat target on you, mm-hmm. and in addition, you're kind of uh, you know every uh, you're kind of expected to win, and you know I've done it once, but yeah, it's not that yeah. easy. And yeah, and I think the, uh, another big factor is that most coaches relied and still on the players that exactly that's what I was going to say instead of revamping it. And this is for me always uh, why are you doing it? <laughs> 2002 was the best example, I think, yep. because in 98, the France team was already old. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only young players were uh, Henri and Trezeguet, mm-hmm. but otherwise the team was really old, already yep. well, old. 28, 29 average. Exactly. In their prime. Some, in, in their prime. And you keep the same players uh, four, four years later, players like Jokaev, didn't mm-hmm. play for Milan anymore. You know, he was playing for Kaiserslautern or... Yep. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, he was playing for Kaiserslautern. It's, it's, it mm-hmm. was bad. It was the same with Dugarry, Leboeuf, all these players. Uh, we didn't have Laurent Blanc anymore. We didn't have Didier Deschamps anymore. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, Roger Le Maire was kind of a um, conservative coach. And yeah. he was not the kind of coach who would bring uh, fresh blood in the team. Mm-hmm. And... Um, back then, there was that tradition with like um, major players, old players, or senior players um, behaving as bosses. Today, you don't really see that. I don't see a player like Pogba or Griezmann. Uh, I don't see players like this refusing young players to get in, you know. But yeah. back then, there was kind of a circle. Uh, we are the daddies and um, trying yeah. to. Not bully, but you know, not really integrate young players uh, as it would uh, as they would do today. Uh, because mm-hmm. players like Loris, Varane, Pogba, Griezmann have been here for a long time, and I they are open to accepting new young players. Mm-hmm. Uh, back back then, uh, players I'm always thinking about Desai, but Desai would not would kind of bully new players. You know make them feel as if they were not part of the group. Yeah. And in the end, it was a bullet in the foot. And I'm pretty sure that without uh, players like Dugarry, Le Boeuf, uh, De Sailly, and with fresh blood, we had the potential, we had players to at least qualify through uh, Absolutely. and make, make it at least to the, the round of, uh, of 16. In 2002, we're back to 2002. It's a perfect uh, transition. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I, I just want to say, I mean, the um, before we go there, I think the one team where I was really surprised that they didn't do it was actually Germany in 2018 because they had done everything right up until 2017. And then they suddenly had this young team that won the Confederations Cup. Mm-hmm. And then he again relied on the old guard instead of uh, taking those players because I, I I remember at work we had this um, we had had this discussion that it's ridiculous well, well, what Germany have they have the really good old players they have the really good new players and then they're yes. completely combusting and since then Germany is trying to come back but it is uh, to me I this didn't make make sense because I said if there's one nation that can do it it should be the Germans <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, and it was a surprise in 2018 because 1994 uh, they lost in the quarterfinals. Um, yes. And, and then, like, and nobody, nobody they, they were getting old. Uh, but they were totally old. That this was a team that just, I mean, and also they they went, um, Franz Beckenbauer basically cursed them but because, because he said that after reun- reunification, now we get the best players. From the east as well, we should be unbeatable for years to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as and Denmark beat them. <laughs> <laughs> and the well, in 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 twenty eighteen, it was really weird because Germany, uh, Jogler re- relied on the as you say the old guard, but they were not that old. No, they were not that uh, old, but there was a lot of unrest also with the Mesut Özil and Gündogan and the photo with Erdogan. Um, yeah, yeah. This, this, this was just was completely really mishandled. That caused mm-hmm. unrest. And I think it also didn't help that I thought that Germany had a really easy group. 
I mean, in a regular yeah. World World Cup, a group with Sweden, Mexico, and South Korea, that's breakfast for Germany. Yeah, it, but it's it's a typical tricky group as well. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's uh, I mean, Senegal, Uruguay, and Denmark. Yeah. How do you call that? Yeah. It should it should it should, it should, it should be a, a piece of cake for France in two thousand two, and and not and no, because motivation is everything, and. You'd rather play with 11 super motivated average players than 11 top class players with no motivation at all. 100%. 100%. And that's the big task that is coming. I'm really curious how France will do next year. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not next year, it's this year. Yeah. This, uh, I'm still in the old year. It, it, it feels really strange uh, to think that. This summer we won't have any World Cup, and it would be around Christmas. Uh, yeah, I, but I, I'm trying. I mean, I was thinking in November, and so on. Yeah, nice World Cup time. I mean, for me, it's always I always have the temptation to take two weeks off from work during the group stages, which mm -hmm. I probably won't do. But there is a certain charm to you know. It's not something where I need to go outside. I can't watch it at home. It's it's nasty outside, and that there's something nice to do. So I I can, you know, I'm not the person that wants to go um, outside and watch with all the others for watching by, by, by myself. I actually think I might have a free summer, uh, which is also nice in a way. Yeah, <laughs> because this I summer. Understand. This summer we had to plan vacation because of the Euros. I said uh, that month, June, forget about me. <laughs> That's what I said. But because I was working hard on, yeah. on, on, on uh, for the Euros, for us it's like once every four years with UFA, and we can't miss it. Yeah. And so you have to be fully focused on it. And the problem is that I will definitely have work for the World Cup as well because I found a new client who worked with the, uh, the, with FIFA. Um, the, the the problem is that for me the World Cup is just a matter of atmosphere, and for me it's in the summer. That's that's it. You know, it's a it's a matter of sunshine and yeah, yeah. No I, matter like I watched I watched the Euros. I was working so hard that I was I stayed at home all the time. Mm -hmm. But it was really nice to have this sunshine outside, and it's just yeah, it's just the atmosphere. Even though I didn't really get hyped uh, with it last June because of the Euros, which was split. Uh, all over Europe, and I don't really feel. I got into for it because I thought it was a very entertaining tournament. Mm. In many ways, yeah. and for for uh, you know the last the years in France for me, uh, I could not get into them. I know it was in France and so on, but I found this was one of the worst tournaments ever. Really. Um, from this, it, I I did not feel it until maybe when Iceland beat England and Italy beat Spain. Then it ignited for me, but then it quickly mm -hmm. wasn't done again. I felt uh, France was not was not were not particularly inspiring. Germany was always winning. Uh, then there was you know the one thing that did not happen this time around. There were all these middle European teams, uh, the, yeah. the middle class Euro European teams. That you know what 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 they're good. They're defensively sound, uh, but hard to break down. But it's not very inspiring, in many ways. And there were so many games that I felt Euro 2016. I mean, for me, the whole year 2016 is one of the worst years that I've ever experienced. And the Euros were kind of yeah. That was the icing on the cake. Um, and then you know. A Portugal team that was not that Portugal didn't deserve it, uh, just for historical reasons, they deserved it. But yeah. they were one the most uninspiring Portugal team that ever I've ever seen. True, true. And it's like they took revenge for, for, for all the great Portugal teams that didn't win anything, absolutely. But to me, they were not, they were kind of the right champion, like the same thing as in 2000. France was for me the right champion, although. Probably Italy played best overall, but I said this honestly, was honestly it's hard. The four the four semi-finalists in 2000 could have won it, honestly. Yeah. No, and so, I, I say Euro 2000 is still my favorite tournament of all time. Yeah. Because... Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, and for most for, for all for people who follow football um yes. afar and those who are really into it, they both agree, both caps agree that mm -hmm. it was the best. Uh, the best tournament of all time. Even the quarterfinals were amazing with Yugoslavia, Every, Spain. Everything, this was the best tournament. And uh, 
what yeah. actually I thought, uh, what, what I might want to say, uh, Italy played okay, but they were playing mostly defensively sound, whereas everyone else was playing offensively. And so I said, yeah. I hate Maldini not winning this one, but if I say France is the right champion because they played offensively at least. So this yeah. was the right, it was in that sense the right winner, although probably on the day Italy probably would have deserved it more than France. Uh, but yeah. I think, oh, but they, they, and, and there is the plot twist in the final that makes it like the the, the icing, you know, yeah. the, the icing on the cake. Like you, you, how on earth? I I perfectly remember my father in the couch watching the game and we thought scoring, and my dad who was wearing a wardrobe, you know, about to go to bed, and he jumped and and shouted, <laughs> which is it's in it, it's in yeah. go. Cool. And and from that moment on, uh, when you know bit, when you know your sports and when you actually play competitive sport, no matter the level, but you know that in the mind there was only one winner. There, there was one winner, and it was just a matter of time. Yeah. And what a goal from Trezeguet! And it was, but you know, the 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 Italian fate in two thousand was a bit like. Uh, France in rugby in 2011, you know, like yep. over, over, the, over the tournament, the tournament they didn't deserve it. Mm. But on the day of the final, yes. they, they were the one who deserved it. And do, do you have any recollection of the final France against New, New Zealand? In I do have a little bit. I mean, it's probably not as bit. I, I do remember that uh, the final was very tightly con 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 contested and that um, the New Zealanders were very much held at bay and it was a valiant fight by the French. That's what I remember from that final. Yeah, but you, I, actually, the, the, the refereeing was controversial, really controversial. There are many videos on YouTube mm -hmm. uh, which uh, explain the rules. rules. Yeah. And, like, Richie McCall was free fighting all the time all the, yeah. all, all, all through, throughout the game. And there were many, many, many penalties that were not uh, whistled, granted to France, which mm -hmm. at least one would have ended a, 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 as three points and France would have won. But... Mm -hmm. New Zealand had suffered from the Christchurch um, earthquake a few months before. Yeah. And, you know, the in terms of morale, the country needed it. Mm -hmm. And the it's the same in 1995, France against South Africa in the semifinal mm -hmm. uh, with the, the, the phantom try or the try that was not awarded to Benazi. Um it's the yeah. It was kind of unfair. It's kind of a discretion for, from yeah. from a uh, digression. Can't remember digression. the word, but Whatever. digression <laughs> from for, 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 from what we were saying. But yeah, Italy is the same as France in, in two thousand eleven in a way. Yeah. And the and and it was everything was made to to make it a great tournament because in the final, the Italians kept trash talking on the bench and they kept trash talking. Uh, and uh, to the, the French bench mm -hmm. and players were like heading each other. Hence Thierry Henry doing this when Wilton scores. Yeah. You know, he, he flips, he, he just looks at the Italian bench says, sit down. With yeah, yeah. And everything was perfect. You know, it was the, the climax of, of, of a great tournament. My, uh, what, I mean, I love to listen to the ESPN FC podcast. It's totally trashy. In many ways, but you know, yeah. uh, they have sometimes very often Franck Le Boeuf on, which I uh, yeah, <laughs> and sometimes Alessandro Del Piero. Oh. And you and during, and I think in the Euros, they kind of said, Well, um, how here's Alessandro Del, Del Piero, the one, the guy who missed two big chances in the Euro 2000 final, and he said. Well, why did you need to bring this up? I thought we were friends, blah, blah, blah. I, I, you don't love me. And Franck Le Boeuf shouts, the whole of France loves you for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Franck Le Boeuf has kind of that reputation. He's really cocky. Exactly. So, um, yeah. it is obviously he's really cocky, but which, what's funny with the guy is that he's really aware of who he was and his yes. status. And the fact that he was a, kind of a second-tire player who got mm -hmm. lucky to exactly. be... There and uh, it's funny, you know, because he doesn't like humor about himself either. You know, he yeah. he's the first one to joke about himself, uh, so it's funny too. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, he's he's actually real real fun. 
uh, in many ways there. So I, to I totally, I mean, Del Piero take, take, takes in stride and uh, says, well, you know, I've won Champions League, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and I have also a World Cup. <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, and, and they always make fun on the stuff um, that Franck Leboeuf, um, the guy who never brings up that he won the World Cup when he every show mentions how he... <laughs> They say, well, it's <laughs> perfect French, arrogant, and a World Cup winner. <laughs> and, and, and a Hollywood actor as well. Hollywood actor, absolutely. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny because the guy played for Strasbourg yeah. and Chelsea and Marseille and all mm -hmm. clubs which were not in their prime, and he managed to win the World Cup at the Euros. Yes. <laughs> How do you do that? And to play the final and to be good in the final in 98, it's worth the game of his life. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, it's, um, I don't know why I come back to Germany, but for me, the, um, uh, another World Cup final story that I love is the one of Sven Kramer. In the 2014 World Cup final, he played his first international game for Germany as a starter because I think it was a Kedira or whatever was injured. Uh, what's the name again? Uh, Kramer. Oh, Kramer. Kramer. Okay, because you have the German, you speak German, so you yeah. can't speak properly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Kramer, yeah. And, and, I, and, and, and it's so funny. But, uh, playing your first international from the start in the World Cup final, and then he gets knocked out in the 29th minute. <laughs> it doesn't even remember anything of the final. <laughs> I mean, it's so funny. He was an expert on uh, German TV dur during the Euros. And actually quite funny, too. Uh, he was um, talking with the... Uh, um, how he was talk 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 talking about it. He said, uh, yeah, I don't remember anything of the final. Just remember uh, the call. You will play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's too bad. But, that, but uh, that's one of, one of the ultimate stories to me that, yeah, that can only happen in the World Cup. <laughs> funny, funny anecdote about that, about that match. I, I, I was so rooting for Germany. Honestly, I wanted them to win because for me, they were the best team. Not they, me. they deserved it. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but uh, in, the after, in the aftermath of the final, you know, with the celebration and everything, the the French TV obviously stayed on air before uh, until you know mm -hmm. they lifted the trophy, and Arsène Wenger, who was a pundit for uh, the, the the first channel at the time, said France would beat Germany in, uh, in in two years' time in the Euros, and that's what happened. And that's so funny because I, I'm kind of a retro guy, you know. I like watching old stuff on YouTube, you know, yeah. and finding old um, TV shows and stuff like that. And when he said that, I was like. When I, I rewatched it, I was like, oh, nice one. Uh, yeah. And it's, yeah, it was really clever because he could feel, we could feel in 2014 that France had potential and that they could do better. Yeah. And um, yeah, but Germany won out of experience, just like France beat Belgium out of experience in 2018. I had the. And, uh, that was the last time we did, I did with my friends. You know, we had this uh, tipping game for that World Cup. With, uh, we started that in 96 and we had it every two or two, 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 two years. But then, uh, you know, I was always uh, um, responsible for making the spreadsheet where you can add, add in your results and the points will automatically get calculated. And then I couldn't do that anymore. But I do remember that France game uh, because that was one of the few times that I got the result in a knockout round completely right. Halftime score, full-time score. Uh, mm -hmm. which meant a oh, lot of points for me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is when I'm I'm like that, if I have some, something, if I've made it, it is, I had to do this ahead of the tournament. But I don't check my results any, anymore because I want to enjoy the game. And I didn't want to yeah. root for Germany to terminate. If I would have known that after 15 minutes they won the up, I would have been dying from uh, suspense, well, whatever, because I actually want France to win that one. <laughs> but, yeah. Know. I played my very first tipping game um, during the Euros, uh, the mm -hmm. official UFA fantasy game yeah. uh, with my uni hockey former team. You know, they mm -hmm. formed the group, and so I yeah. joined. I joined the league, and I, like at the round of eight, I was eleventh out of twelve, mm -hmm. and I got two or 
two or three good results, correct results. So I, I kind of climbed up. And for the final, I was the only one to guess a 1-1, one, one, a 1-0, one, oh, Italy, England. And I yeah. guessed that yeah. Italy would win, win the, 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 the final. And it, it pushed me to the second second place at the very, very last minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, was, this was like I wanted Italy to win. Yeah. And they won the way I wanted them to win. And it was, yeah, it was really nice. But I do agree. It kind of ruins the game sometimes. Yeah, yeah, um, no, I and I. That's why I, you know, I'm. Although I do work a little bit for betting, I do not bet myself because I actually want to enjoy bet. the games and so on. So, but uh, the other oh, thing, yeah. the other thing that I managed to do with this tipping game in 2002, I tipped Italy to become champions. In 2006, I said Spain will become champions. Oh yeah, I remember you have you are like one World Cup early. One World Cup time. ahead in 2010. <laughs> I said Germany will become champions. Yeah, and yeah, I I realized that, but then I said, okay, I wanna actually hedge my bet, and I think in 2014 I also said Ger uh, Germany will will become champions because it was kind of yeah, I see Germany are now big favorites in in a way, so I wanna hedge my bets if I should if they should should should, should win at least I get something back from that. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm planning, I, the script is already done, but I will film a double video mm. um, on Spain 2010 and Germany 2014, because for me, yeah. these are, since 1970, these are the, the only two times when the big favorite won the World Cup. Like in 2010, there were no, it, there was Spain, which was yes. European champion playing a great, football style and just a group of outsiders who all failed to to to, to make it mm. um and it was in 2014 but well, spain as spain as as, as a 2014 twice. who remember the big favorites uh i know from betting were brazil and spain i i but germany was the dangerous a really dangerous yeah that the name on the me the, for the me was example. germany for me, it was Germany's time, big time. Mm -hmm. For me, Brazil was no favorite at all. If you know football, statistics yeah, yeah. are nothing. And, but everyone and said that because they're at home and, you know, blah, 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 they yeah. will be... Well, and you could see it in the, in the way they were refed. Yeah, exactly. Because they shouldn't have made it to the, even to the quarterfinals. Yeah. Um, but honestly, after semi-final in 2006, final in 2008, semi-final in 2010, no, semi-final in 2012, yeah. I knew... And, and they, they took, you know, uh, over these six years, they matured. And, um, and I knew, or eight years, they matured a lot. And, you, well, we talked about that already, but you never learn more than when you lose. And if you want to win big, you have to lose big. And when you fail mm -hmm. in either semifinals or finals for, well, five times in a row, obviously you learn big. And it was their moment. It was obvious. And the it way they won their games... It was also this yes. was a Germany team that was bred to beat the Spain team in the sense because I think that was the big hump that they always had to overcome. And what was even more uh, so is that then the Red and Brazil really played in the hands of teams that could counterattack fast and quick. Mm. And that was Spain's undoing. And that is when Germany then really became also Germany. Arguably should have lost to Algeria in the round of 16. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. The way they so won their games, the, the way they won their matches yeah, was, exactly. champions, was champion style, you know, yeah. uh, even against Argentina. They never had it easy. No. Um, no France, it was, France was dangerous at some point in the game. Benzema had a great, great opportunity. But the way Neuer stopped the ball yeah. like, showed, okay, this no, is I mean, that, that game, Germany, I always felt Germany had it in the back. But it was that France, I was hoping that France could come back, but this was kind of, uh, that was when, when I knew that Germany will become champions. It, that's what the wants to beat um, France and that they then roll over Brazil that way. Yeah. <laughs> it's a completely yeah. different Yeah. I, I was so, I, I, I really, I was uh, ecstatic when I saw Germany roll, crushing Brazil like that. It was so. I turned so... the game off at halftime. <laughs> Uh, a World Cup semi-final to, to turning off at halftime, but uh, uh, for me, there's nothing more boring to watch 
in a game that's already decided. I lose the yeah. there. Uh, that's why. I'm yeah, but it was. I I agree, but that very time, mm. uh, I I I kept watching. I was wearing a Germany shirt, uh, yep. watching the game, uh, because. For me, Brazil was a fraud, and I so wanted them to be out of the World Cup. Mm. With all their uh, crying during the anthem and everything, I was like, come on. Yeah, yeah. Respect, respect yourself. Just try kiss Fred. How, how do you want the World Cup? What, what do you want to win? And the, the was poor, and the keeper was poor, and the coach was poor. It was Everything was so frustrating. The way they beat Colombia was so unfair and mm. it was the same against Costa Rica it was so unfair as well because I think Costa Rica hit the bar and was it in the penalty shootout or during the game I can't remember no 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 Costa Rica they played the Costa Rica played against the Netherlands Costa uh, Rica played not... Costa Chile, Rica Chile sorry Chile yeah Chile Chile, uh, yeah. Chile they, they, in, they, against Chile they were lucky yeah far as I remember and, so yeah, sorry, I got confused because of the red of the shirt, <laughs> <laughs> red and blue. Uh, but yeah, and so I wanted them to lose so bad, and mm -hmm. I didn't mind the final list uh, being Argentina or Netherlands or the Netherlands. I would have preferred the Netherlands because, well, for uh, an all European final. But yeah, it was. I was game. actually. I mean, my. Uh, the Netherlands would have been my favorite too. Uh, you know, the, the team that I was really supporting, but in the final, I thought, yeah, Messi would deserve it finally to, you know, to get over this hump that the Maradona comparisons are done. But you know, yeah. it wasn't meant to be. But it was Germany's time. I still think Neuer should have been sent off for yeah. tackling on Iguain. But uh, yeah, it was uh, it was probably one of the best World Cup winning goals I've seen in a long time. Oh yeah, yeah, it was nice because it, it seems so easy. Yeah, uh, but it's, and now he's it's nowhere. Really and now Goethe is nowhere. <laughs> like Skilachi in 1990. Yes. Yeah, there. Are th these these are yeah. But I, anecdote, you, uh, I, yeah. I kind of hate myself. Two days ago, I saw. The Netherlands blue shirt player issue, the actual kit room player issue with the heat sealed details mm -hmm. in the back, popping with the shorts, 35 euros. Oh, I didn't buy it from that world cup, yeah, 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 for the 2014. The blue, the blue version, the yes, I love that one, the shirt, I love that the, one, and the shirt was player issue. And I thought, yeah, it was just 35 euros, and it was like. Yeah, but I don't want to start the year spending too much money. Yeah. Um, and I already grabbed the, the home kit from 2010 mm -hmm. in player issue as well. So I was like, okay, I'll pass because I, I don't really have memories of that shirt and I don't really like it. And so it was sold in 10 minutes. And mm -hmm. now I, I totally regret. I'm like, yeah, I should have bought it. I, it was such a great opportunity because I've never seen any. Today I bought... A player issue shirt from a World Cup. I'm not spoiling anything. Yeah, yeah. You'll see in a video. It's a. It's this time. It, it's a shirt that I've been looking for, really, yeah. and um, I can't wait to get it. But uh, well, I mean, yeah. I know. I mean, I love the lion. I mean, this 2014 home jersey. I bought it during the World Cup because I said yeah. I finally need to get it. But I regret so much because I always wanted to have a blue Netherlands shirt with the uh, with orange accents. I, and the one, if, the one if that I really the, like is sorry, the, um, the 98 one I really like. Yeah, it's nice. And I think the even better one was the Nike one just before that. And then it's only yeah. the 2014. I if it had been for the if it had been the home shirt, I would have bought it straight away. Yeah. Uh, I just hesitated a few because I was like. Okay, but what games did they play with it? It was against Australia, and that's it. And, and I remember when it was sold, I was like, "Oh, that's the one with they beat Spain with this one." They beat Spain with like, Brazil. Oh no, I didn't remember that at the time. <laughs> and, and so yeah, this is the shirt uh, that you cannot get any, anymore. That's the one thing. I mean, 2014 shirts you can readily get. I mean the. The World Cup winning shirt from Germany. I got a replica uh, two years ago for five bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, because I see, I, I see a few popping regularly on Vinted uh, for Germany. 
Brazil, um, Argentina, I, all of them. But the Netherlands, especially the away jersey, I have not seen this one. And the one time I saw it, it was so expensive that I didn't go for it. Uh, honestly, and it was the player issue version, the ones I yeah. collect. And, uh, and the, not the authentic player issue, which yeah, you yeah. buy online, the mm -hmm. actual kit room player issue. Yeah. And I was like, ah, I, uh, now, now, yeah, I do regret it, but yeah. You know, we all what, have those moments. What, yeah, that's what it is to be a collector. Sometimes yes. you miss out. And, uh, exactly. and it's even more frustrating when you miss out out of stupidity and out of, like, yeah, you're bugging. Well, I'm not going to buy it. Go on, buy it, like, 35 euros. Now, not... You know, my wife says if something is gone like that, she says a new avenue will open and you will get something okay. probably. At that time, you know, at that time, you decided exactly on that. That you yeah. made the, you made the decision and, you know, going back, I mean, it's the same thing, the Strasbourg shirt that I showed you. I knew that it will, I had a feeling that it might stay around because I saw another Strasbourg shirt not too long ago and it was staying there for a long time. And I thought maybe when I get the notification that the ad will expire, then I will uh, take it. Suddenly it was gone and yeah, I regretted it, but I got some other nice shirts instead, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, that's what I think. Like I have the Netherlands 2010, their last yeah. final. That's 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 nice. But mm -hmm. you know, you wanted like I, I, it would have been an investment if you if, if you buy it and then you receive it and you regret it. You yeah, see, yeah, you can still sell it for like three times the price. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's it, this this time it was really stupid not to buy it. You know, it was not like eighty euros. Yeah. Uh, my, my my actually my wife has the same philosophy. Like uh, if something happens, it's always for a reason, and then you have better opportunity. And in the past, I had like I had the Germany nineteen ninety six player issue version, mm -hmm. and I I grabbed it for twenty euros or something like that, and I sold it over, and I I didn't make enough money selling it because I sold it to Classic Football Shows two years ago, mm -hmm. um, and I sold it for like. 50 or 60 euros so just twice the price but honestly if i had taken the time to sell it on ebay i would have sold it for at least 80 perhaps 100 so yeah. so and i sold it and because i was not really into the, that vintage shirt and it took me three or four months to realize and i was like i shouldn't have sold it a player issue germany 1996 and yeah. it took me and it took two years for me to see another one pop up Yep. And another one popped up. It was in even better condition and it was mm -hmm. just 25 euros. And I thought, okay, let's buy it. I bought it straight away and I'm this time not selling it. Um, By the way, this is, a, I, have a, I have a question to you regarding that. Because you say a vintage shirt. I mean, 96 was not a tournament that, that you were watching in a way. So my question is, how do uh, when you look for shirts, do you look generally, or is, do you kind of say, okay, this is uh, uh, I go only for periods where I've actually watched and I can, I have some emotional connection to it in a way. No, I, I'm 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 more of a, a collector of opportunities. Yeah. Um, and but it's true that I have really few um, vintage shirts in my collections because I can't really relate. I have. A few that I found beautiful, um, and that Germany one, um, mm -hmm. in a way, is is really really cool. I think because we're really it was really simple at a time when yes. shirts were really bold, mm -hmm. and uh, it was really simple. I love it, but no, I don't relate. Uh, I can't relate because I didn't follow the tournament. Um, so I I more I scroll over pages and. I know I, if I have great opportunity, I buy a shirt, but otherwise mostly subco subconsciously, I think I buy, I, I mostly buy shirts that I have uh, memories of. Yeah. Sometimes no, I, you know, once in a while, yeah, I, I grab the a vintage shirt. For instance, I have the Sweden 1994 shirt. Yeah. Uh -huh, that's the so uh, because i made yeah. myself this decision the other day uh you know when i think about my you know i, I, I was thinking about uh holy grail shirts and whatever and there was a long time i thought uh, not that i was ever um going for it but you know the famous holland 1988 shirt mm -hmm. uh that would be something nice to have and then i was thinking about it i do remember but i was not a fan yet i do remember my father watching a final and i do remember that crazy long-haired dude scoring a header 
Mm. The only game that I really remember from that particular tournament is the semifinal between Italy and the Soviet Union, because my brother and I, we just decided to watch it out of, uh, because it was on TV, but we were not following the tournament. I mean, I was not even having the sticker album back then. It was for the 1990 World Cup where I got into it. And so I kind of, I made the decision, you know, even if I would have that one, it doesn't mean too much to me. And so I, I make now a very conscious decision that actually the shirts that I want to buy, I mean, yes, I'm branching out to get loads of teams and this needs to be, is more recent stuff. But when I look winter shirts, I personally made the decision, I will not go past uh, in, in the 80s, 1990. That's the one, the cutoff for me. Hence the one Benfica shirt that, that, that I have because that's the first European Cup final that I saw, Milan against Benfica. Uh, and they were playing in such a shirt back then. So uh, that's kind of my cutoff in a way that I decided now for myself because I, I see, and I'm sometimes even a bit bored when I, when I see especially very young collectors and they all go, yeah, we need the Holland 1988 shirt because it looks cool. Yeah. You don't have a connection to it. I know it's an investment in a way, but if you're a collector, I think you should go for stuff that is more your, uh, for you. But that's my personal opinion. I don't judge, but it's... Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I think in life, when we have an opinion, even if we, we don't want to, we kind of judge. Yeah. Uh, everyone, you know. Uh, <laughs> even though we say we don't judge, we do. Uh, but that's... True, but, the, but you know, it's, it's not that I'm saying, okay, it's good for you. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I, it is not according to my values. Let's put it that way. I, yeah, okay, I understand. Um, I, I agree. I wouldn't go... But first of all, I don't, first of all, I don't understand people saying, oh, I'm going to start a collection. For me, yeah. there is no conscious starting point. That is, that, that is a very good point. It's a natural progression. When I see videos on YouTube, like how to start a collection, you don't mm -hmm. start a collection. It comes naturally. And first of all, sometimes you will buy shit shirts. And then after a while, you're like, okay, they, they're not great, but you, uh, you, you, caught, you caught the virus. And so you're like, okay, I want to improve. So you sell, uh, you trade fake shirts for replicas. And then after that, you trade replicas for player issue, blah, 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 for mm -hmm. instance. But there is no, for me, there is no uh, conscious decision to start a collection. No. It's the best way to have a shit collection, in my opinion. Yeah. And it's just like, for me, it's just when you realize you are collecting it started a few a, a few months before, you know, a, a, a few exactly. ago, a few years ago. You're like, okay, I have five, six. Okay, I, I'm starting to have a collection now, and but that's just my personal opinion. No, no, and, I, I, but, I'm in total agreement with you. This is a mm -hmm. process that starts naturally. You yeah. and you usually start either you start out, you get a few, and suddenly, okay, and now I'm into it, and yeah, maybe I add one more because I really like it. I mean, my yeah. favorite was I got the other day a message that said, I started a collection uh, this year and I'm already at 10 shirts. Yeah, and I, my, reply was, my, my, my reply was, it took me almost 10 years to get to 10 shirts. Yeah, well, it, for me, it took, it took me a Good head start. It, it, it took me less time, but it's not a matter of number or exactly. a matter of, of, of time. It's just that for me, you can say, okay, I'm starting a collection once you realize, okay, I already have kind of a collection. And totally. so you, 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 you don't start a collection. It's just a decision that I want to keep going and add more yep. consciously. Mm -hmm. that, at, at that moment, you can call yourself a collector. But otherwise, yeah. and I, I don't, it's like, I, I really don't like these videos on YouTube where you have millennials um, opening packages of, six fake shirts and they yeah. call it and, and, and they call it a collection for me i i respect most collections uh from the moment that they are not fake shirts yeah uh you can't really call yourself a, a, an art specialist or art collector buying fake, fake paintings yeah and for me it's the same and uh, back to what you said about the holland shirt uh, i i i i mostly i'm in agreement with you it's um I don't see the point. Oh, I need this one because it's cool. If I don't, my 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 ground rule is that I don't buy shirts that I don't like. And mm -hmm. for me, the 1998 shirt 
1988, uh, sorry, uh, is horrible. And so I, I don't want to buy it because I don't find it beautiful. Uh, it was beautiful. It, it has become beautiful uh, because uh, Holland won. won. But it, it, if they were not at the, Euro, at, at the Euros at that time, you can forget about the shirt. Yeah. And it's the same for Denmark 1992. I mean, what kind of shirt is that? It, it's just for me. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, this is typical. Now, I have to say one shirt that is like that time forgot that was brought, brought, brought back is the Belgium 1984 one where they made then the 2018 one is based on that one. Now, I love, yeah, but I love the design of this one. And no, I don't. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, this is a matter of taste. Yeah, exactly. For instance, but this I is had, one that I, was brought back. That was brought back because yeah. everyone had, had, had totally forgotten about that one. Yeah, it's true. It's true because they didn't win about they didn't win with this. They were uh, smashed by France. But, no. For instance, I like the design of the of Denmark 1984. You know, with the but yeah. on which the this year's shirts are based. Uh -huh. uh, this year, a full red shirt that you have is based. Yes. Um, and the 86, the 84 but, was slightly different. If you take for in, for instance, if you take let's take that Belgium shirt for instance. Mm -hmm. If I I wouldn't seek it, okay. I wouldn't yeah. go for it. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't want to buy it necessarily and spend a whole a whole lot of money on it. Yeah, but yeah. if I had the opportunity to buy it for a price that I find reasonable and in my size and okay, it matches the the, the ground rules of my collection. Mm -hmm. I, I could I could buy it because yeah. I like it. That's what mm -hmm. I mean. I wouldn't seek it because I don't have any memory. There is, for instance, that France uh, 1986 shirt that I think yes. is gorgeous. Yep. But I would only try to get it if I could find a player version um, mm -hmm. for a price that I, I think is correct. But yep. I, I wouldn't spend like 500 on it. Uh, and it, and it, sometimes it's worth, worth much more. But if, if I, let's say, I'm on Vinted or... I don't know any secondhand stuff and I like, okay, there is one, someone actually doesn't know what he's selling and it's like 80 euros because they just think it's a vintage t-shirt. I'm going to buy it, yes. but I wouldn't, I wouldn't chase it. I wouldn't chase shirts that I don't have emotion, uh, an emotional yeah. connection with it. And so on this point, we, 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 we agree. Yeah. yeah. I had something, I had something similar. I saw a very old Barcelona shirt. Uh, I mean, it's Maybach and it's, it's, pre the 92 season okay uh for a rather reasonable price where i'm the flags go a little a little bit up uh, how much fake could this be or whatever yeah. but it was a reasonable price uh and i thought kind of yeah but i said a the crest on that one looks ridiculous <laughs> which uh but it's kind of you know i don't have any connection to that barcelona and that's why i let it go in, in, in a way but everything that's mm -hmm. thereafter uh, you know, 1990s kind of, and you know, with club teams, I got into 92, 93. There is where I'm really kicking, and uh, where if I see something nice for reasonable price, I would go. But most of that stuff is not at the moment because I want to grow my selection of especially club teams and so on. So most of it is now mostly recent stuff. Um, and also by your rule, I need to kind of like it. The only okay. time, the only time that I did not do this last year is when I bought the Feyenoord shirt because I went on a mission. I want to get a Feyenoord shirt, and the one that I wanted to get um, was sold just in front of my nose. And the guy said, "I have this one without a sponsor." Even I said, "Okay, okay, fifteen bucks," but um, I was not. I'm still not happy with that <laughs> shirt. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the uh, as for Feyenoord, I have. I have a strange connection. Well, I, I have a soft spot for Feyenoord because I was their uh, translator on a friendly tournament yeah, exactly. in 2016. Yeah. I don't know if you remember the anecdote. Uh, they gave me a shirt. Yes. And so I have a, a soft spot for them. And I, I still think that the Adidas range is better than the Puma and yeah. Kappa range. Yeah. And I, I actually had a, a chat with a, with a guy from the staff who was a former referee. Um, and he was like, I, we, we traded for Adidas because we were tired of getting Puma and, uh, and Kappa because it was really cheap material. And sometimes you had problems with deliveries and everything. With Adidas, you know that you're going to get it yeah. uh, straight away. And I think the shirts are cool. They made, 
they may use the most common templates uh, from Adidas. I don't know why, but with Feynman it works. Yeah, because it's a very simple uh, design. Yeah. And that's yeah. always work. the one thing I have to say. I mean, I have been a little bit disenchanted with editors, other as of late, but what they're doing for especially Ajax is yeah. pretty sublime. Yeah, that's true. Ellis, Ellis from um, Away yeah. Days released mm -hmm. a video yesterday about the 2021 or 2022 great picks or great shirts that were released last year. Yeah. And uh, he blamed Adidas for releasing so cool shirts for Ajax and he being a Leeds fan having a shirt that only blue switched to yellow on the shoulders and that was I it. totally like, agree the Leeds shirts are so, I mean if they could would go at least the Milan route where you have a blue and then a yellow stripe in between that would be my because I've been looking for Leeds as well for my collection because I think they're a pretty big club that deserves to be there uh yeah but I have to say that what they had before uh, under Kappa, they were really nice shirts. Cannot find at the moment anywhere. Uh, but Adidas, yeah, last season's away jersey I liked. But I thought the colors were too dark. It's too bad because I had, uh, I sold it, but I had the uh, Nike yellow with Strongbow uh, yep. sponsor. Uh, I sold it a few months ago and with QL on the back. Um, uh, yeah. so with the official Champions League printing, yeah. Uh, or UFA Cup because they played the UFA um, Cup first round. I had this shirt, it's too bad because I would have preferred to sell it to you. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I sold it, yeah. If you had told me that you were after a Leeds shirt, I would have sold it to you. I sold it because it was a replica. And yeah. uh, if it had been a player issue, I would have kept it. I, I actually have seen Leeds live in Barcelona. That was two thousand. The last time that Barcelona got eliminated from, 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 from the group stage. But they beat yeah. on that day. 2000, 2001, I think. 2000, 2001, yeah, 2000. Yeah. It must have been 2000. Yeah. I, I need to turn on my camera because now my phone, the storage is full. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, it's too bad because we're hearing each other quite perfectly now. Yes. But, you know, we anyway I need to go to the closing stages now. So. Oh, already? No, you know, we are, we've said 90 minutes and so on, so. Okay, uh, how, how long are we now? No, it's not, I'm, I'm conscious of time, it's uh, 9.20. 9.20, oh, no, 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 um, I, I, I was talking about how, how long have we been speaking? Uh, I think we started uh, short, shortly after eight, so I think we are. Already. <laughs> we, okay. we, uh, I know. For us, the, it fl it flew by like this. I totally am aware. Yeah. Of it. <laughs> I know uh, it, it screams for part two for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I I would love to. It was the perfect day today because for a week my wife is uh, yeah, yeah. out visiting her sister, so uh, mm. I can just uh, yeah. Um, do you have any? First of all, before we keep chatting a little bit, yeah, yeah. Uh, because it, it would be too brutal for me because I like chatting. But uh, do you have any question? Uh, I have yes, I do have. Uh, now it, it doesn't come. I mean, I know that you said that Umbra is your favorite brand. Yeah, don't spoil too much because there is a video which is being released uh, next uh, Sunday. Yes, but what yeah. other brands do you enjoy? Well, or are I there any brands where you say? Yay and nay. <laughs> Let's put that. Yeah. Uh, okay. It would be so. I I have many shirts from many brands. So and all brands are able to product uh, to to make great shirts and shit shirts. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's Absolutely. start from this. And I. I, I I have to say I've always loved Nike because mm -hmm. I don't know they have that little thing uh like take this one for instance yes yes it's, it's just a, it's just a piece of beauty um, mm -hmm. i've always loved nike even with my team conflable here uh, you can't mm -hmm. really see it but uh, uh i'm in charge of the shirts and i've always bought nike templates to print yes. the logo because i've always thought that they were nice but uh i if i had to say that for the least uh, famous uh, yep. brands 
I I love Macron what they're doing now, and it's I love uh, I love Lecoq Sportif as well. Uh, I have a little experience with Lecoq Sportif because I've only one shirt of theirs. It's it's a really nice Fiorentina shirt, but yeah, I I I I have a Fiorentina shirt from the year before. And actually, I, I grabbed the player issue uh, one week ago uh, for 25 bucks. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make a video because I, I, I have the replica as well. So I'm going yeah. to compare it, on a, mm -hmm. compare them on a video. And, I, and I'll be honest, I'm often disappointed by Adidas. I don't know why. Um, yes, me too. I think for me, to be honest, I, I was thinking about it. For me, Adidas, they're coming back to 2002, they lost it right around there. Yeah. Wait, when? Uh, they, when and, The this the 2000 range for France and then all the shirts they are really super, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But as soon yeah. as they start, and for me the uh, it's another question. I have what's the best and the worst period of design. I have to say the 2000s for me, where all these little slivers started popping up all over the shirts. Yeah. I cannot stand that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, but for me it's different because I was really young, so I have. I still I have fond memories. Yeah, yeah. So I can't really, I, I, it's hard for me to have an objective point of view mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. this. But I, I see your point, yeah. Uh, it, and it depends on the brands. And I, I have to say, I've never been a, fo a, a Puma fan either. Uh, Puma really surprised me at the Euros with great kits. Yes. But otherwise, over his, over, over, over well, over the years, they've always been really innovative, that, but, well, there are, many designs, there are many designs that they missed, I think. And my favorite, some of my favorite, I've ha I have them right behind, the Africa shirts for 2010, love them to bits. Uh, yeah. But then there are others, I mean, I know that Lusk uh, was from 98, when, you know, the, in, 90, in, in, in 98, there was the a whole scandal, bankruptcy, blah, blah, blah. We were Reebok, and then suddenly Reebok didn't want to have to do it, and Puma jumped in. And we got for two or three years really nice Puma kits. And I actually mourned the fact when we left Puma because actually that was something. They were still okay back then. But I have yeah, to say, Puma got too innovative in many ways. I mean, I loved in a way what they tried to do with Cameroon to kind of stand out, but then it got a little bit too much. I mean, like the onesie kit and then... What, what I don't like with Puma is that there is too much difference between the replicas and the player version. That uh, might be, I mean, that I, that, that I have to take your word for it, but I, I would believe you. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's obvious. Uh, if you take the, so the 2010, uh, from starting from 2010 to, I don't know, uh, 2016, they had like, players had a, that super, tight design yes. mm -hmm. and it looked totally different from the replica and i was like that's unfair of course most football fans can't really uh, pull pull off uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the look the, <laughs> the look but there are uh, fans who are athletes as well and who want to buy shirts to you know to to to, to look good as well and For me, there, there were too many differences. And the, the kids, uh, at the end of the day, looked different. Yes. And that's something I don't like. And it, it was the same in 2010. You know, players had tight fit. The replicas were a bit looser. Mm -hmm. And you can't totally see the difference. And that's not something I, I, it's not something I like. And actually, they, they stopped doing tight fit shirts for players this year in, well, for the 2020 range. Yes. Because even in 2018, players are that ever need technology exactly. you know, with the, yeah. uh -huh. uh, which, which looked good on players, but as soon as you wanted to buy a shirt, uh, a replica one, well, it looked, it looked cheaper. And that's, yeah, it's just something that... Uh, I can see what you mean. Well. I remember when I got, I think it was the, my Uruguay shirt, is a, the Puma shirt from 18. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm always, when you look, aha, they had the, and I saw this for first, when Italy lost to Sweden, they had these weird patterns down there. Yeah. And then I got the Puma shirt and yeah, it's not quite there. And um, it's a little bit still, the, it is still kind of, I see the overall pattern, but this additional stuff, which I didn't like, so I don't mind that it's not there, but it was kind of a little bit of disappointment. I gotta yeah, say. I liked it, yeah. 
Yeah. I, I, personally, I liked it, but yeah, it's uh, it's too bad. It's too bad, and uh, mm. that's what happened with the um, Adidas in 2010 as well with the tech fit stuff. And yeah. you buy a replica, and the shirt doesn't look uh, because this time you take the front home shirt, not the away shirt, but the home shirt from 2010. Mm -hmm. The tech fit version and the replica version look completely. It's with the tech fit style. For me, it's gorgeous. The replica style is horrible because okay. the you know the the stripes here yeah. work really well when they fit the body, and yes, they don't yes. work at all with yeah, loose yeah. shirts. And that's that's another problem. You could buy the tech fit version on uh, on the Adidas web website though. Mm -hmm. But once again, uh, while all teams Germany, Argentina, Spain, the shirt you would buy on Adidas would have the embroidered logo like the national team. Buying the tech fit front shirt would have an embroidered logo while the player would have a heat printed uh yeah, heat printed awesome. logo. Yeah. And, and why? I am yeah, something I, I, I would love to have the answer to the to, 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 to that question. But uh also on the, on the difference between the player version for Puma and the home version, when I look at this year's Milan kit, the replica version has a red color. Oh, yeah. And the home version, and this is something that I this is something I, I, I cannot get, get, get on board with, that I get a completely different look. I don't necessarily not like the white color, but at least give me the same style. Don't add something red under. Yes, all the players wear a red shirt under, so it looks like they have the same uh, color, mm. but it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's unfair. And I was not aware of that. I learned it on your, watching your video, actually. Yes. Uh, I was not aware of that difference, and it's just like... What but it did, this was came immediately to, to me because I looked at the ball and I, now they're starting this as well because I know there was this huge discussion in MLS where I think two years ago Adidas um, gave very fine prints on the shirts of some MLS teams and the replica version don't even have them. They are clearly yeah. different. Uh, Elise, Elise, Elise talks about this in his last video yeah. uh, too. Mm -hmm. the, the Seattle uh, mm -hmm. shirt, uh, the Hendrix tribute. Yeah. yeah, it was like, uh, yeah, it's exactly. so different. It's like, yeah, at, at some point, the replica even looks like a, a fake shirt. Absolutely. And this is not, for me, at least, I mean, I don't, maybe if you make a rep replica, get rid of, strip it of the technology, but at least give me the same color, the same cuffs. Uh, yeah. Okay, you can embroider the shirt, fine, uh, instead of heat print, but at least, at least give me the same design. Because that's, mm -hmm. that is where I draw the line, where I really then uh, would get very yeah. upset. It's kind of disrespectful, especially considering the price of the shirt. Absolutely. Uh, you, you buy a shirt because you want it to, uh, to look like it's your team, you know? Yeah. And perhaps you may, someone from outside the collecting world and the shirt world would find it us being uh, fussy and uh, this being very superficial. But when you're passionate about that, yeah. it's, just, it's just natural that you get angry uh, at this. And I, I am actually about to film a video, the, the one I told you about with the 2002 Real Madrid shirt, mm -hmm. replica versus player issue, because yep. I'm still earning the two for <laughs> selling you the, the replica. But at that time, that's what I liked. The, they were really alike, you know? Yep. And when you compare the two, you're like, okay, I see the differences, but mm -hmm. it was just a matter of comfort and that was it. And the yep. style was totally the same. Mm -hmm. and so this this was more respectful it's the, the same for this one the yep. equipment technology is just about making this part a bit softer you know in the inside but otherwise fabric fabric wise that they they're pretty much the same as the replica version and that's what it should be that's what it should be i mean um, for me i remember even that going um you know, I, I'm thinking, uh, my mind is asking myself, well, but, but if, if, if I'm a fan and I have a shirt and then I look and I see the players are wearing something differently, I feel cheated because I yeah. want to, as a fan, I want to be like them at this point. Yes. What's the point of buying a shirt? If, exactly. If, if, if that's the case, then buy a t-shirt or a training top. It will cost... Or buy the uh, fake for 20, 20 bucks from China. Yeah, that's what I do when I um, when I go to a store. I I barely buy replicas. I I don't buy replicas when I know there is a player issue on the market yeah. somewhere. But if I know that the players wear on the on the pitch, they wear replicas. I can buy replicas. That's mm -hmm. what I did in Sevilla. I was in the in 2017. I was, I, I visited the 
Sevilla store and the Betty store, and I bought mm-hmm. a shirt. Uh, and I, I bought a shirt from um, from the Betty store. But uh, when I visited the Sevilla store, the the shirts were not quite the same as what the players wore. Anyway, I thought, okay, I'm not going to buy a replica. I'd rather buy a T-shirt, and I bought a T-shirt. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, and when I came back home, I found the, the I found the, the exact same shirt that I, I picked it because it was a, a kind of a memory uh, par procuration, we'd say in French, <laughs> okay. yeah. a souvenir par procuration. Yeah. Uh-huh. So yeah, uh, then, but that was it. And uh, I don't re- I really don't like you know when they change features on the shirts. Yeah. Uh, and it's the same. And it's even more because. We didn't mention it in the video, but I don't only collect football shirts. I, I also exactly. collect other sports. And it's even more striking with rugby shirts. Yeah. With rugby shirts, you have... I've even, seen actually, it. I've even seen it without being that big of a fan. I've seen the differences. <laughs> when you buy a, a rugby shirt and you pay uh, 140 for the player version, you actually get something really worth your money with a great with a tight fit, he printed and everything. But when you buy a replica, you feel like, okay, I don't quite wear the shirts that they're wearing. It's, mm-hmm. it's, and, and there is also a specificity with the Toulouse shirt. Um, since last year, they've changed their policy in terms of selling the player issue shirts in the store. Before that, until uh, 20, uh, 2019, 2020, in the official store, when you buy the player version, you'd actually have the player version with a GPS pouch in the in the yeah. back. Since last year, when you buy one, you have the exact same shirt as the players without the GPS pouch. So I went, I, I asked, I asked the girl at the store, I'm like, what why do you do that? They're like, because fans don't need a GPS pouch. I was like, okay, I see your point, but when you're a collector, you want the exact same shirt when yeah. you spend the money. But in her defense, I, I, I had the opportunity to wear the actual player issue with the pouch and, and, and this one without the pouch. And it's way more comfortable to wear to yeah. wear without yeah, yeah. the pouch. So I see what they wanted but, to do here. But there is a, a, a speak of other sports in ice hockey. Um, you Yeah, with the jog strap. With the jog strap. Side. But uh, <laughs> the funny thing is that the new, I don't have any of the new Adidas. And I hear that the Adidas uh, shirts, when you see them up close, the logos are really well made and so on for the NHL stuff. But the Adidas shirts are sort of player issue. They still have the fight strap back there. But it's not what the players are wearing on the pitch. On the yeah. I hate it. And that's what Nike does that with, uh, with uh, their player issue shirts as well. Mm-hmm. You, buy, you buy the uh, player issue authentic, yeah. but uh, that's what they wear. But it's not that what they wear. They wear even slimmer fit shirts yes. with the heat printed details. Um, put this on sale, and uh, and you will. It doesn't cost you much, and uh, I hate it. And what I, I used to like with replica hockey shirts back in the day, they were yeah. made in Canada, and yes. they were top quality. Mm-hmm. Really. In the pre rebook area, even yeah. even the rebook replicas uh, are, 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 are the one thing with the rebook replicas that I hate. I mean, I I, I have a lot a lot of them because um, just when I switched over uh, Adidas, there was a year where suddenly they became really cheap to get, so I stocked up. But the one thing I hate with them is that the replicas, the material that is on the front, the back side is the player issue material. It's a four way stretch. The front is a normal two way stretch, and it snags like crazy. So now the connection goes. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's, it's true. And I have a, a Canadian's Montreal match worn shirt. Yeah. Uh, so I could compare that the fabric was not the same at all. Uh, whereas I think in the nineties, uh, if you take a, a match a match yeah. shirt and a replica, the fabrics were kind of the same. Yes. Uh, and that's exactly. what I don't like. And it's true with Reebok, the big size uh, at the bottom is horrible. Uh, I don't mind it actually. <laughs> it, I know. No, I, don't, I, I don't mind that one. It's because you know uh, it's the time when I was in America. This is how you got the rebook re- at the NFL and the NHL, and they had it all the time there. So I thought it's just a feature. Yes, it looks nicer without, but I kept all mine on. <laughs> yeah, that's what Nike did uh, in the until 1998 in football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, this is kind of an American feature. So I, 
Yeah. I was all right with it. But I mean, the funny thing is that Adidas never claims that it was a player issue because they just said, these are the shirts produced by Adidas. And then they had the cheaper Fanatics version, which is uh, yeah. by Adidas, but they're not Adidas branded. So if you buy an Adidas shirt, you get something close to the ice shirt, but it's not, uh, at least they don't yeah. say it's an authentic shirt. That's what I have to say in their defense. Yeah, at least they're not, they're, they're not lying yet. Yeah. yeah. But on the other side, they jacked up the price. I mean, um, I, I, I remember before you could get like a hockey jersey like that for $90, the Reeboks. Uh, when Adidas came in and immediately $150 for a shirt and now it's only going up. And I, I mean, I know the American market and hockey fans are usually the more they have a little bit more money, but I, I don't find it fair. And then you get the cheaper Fanatics version for 70 and that's not, I don't it's find not it. It's not worth it. Yeah, it's not worth it because it's not the same quality. And you, well, the good side of having, uh, of hockey shirts is that they don't change much. Yes. So when you buy a shirt, you invest your money, but you can't really rely on a uh, summer sale to get a shirt because uh, summer sales are meant to empty the stocks and then they're not going to empty any stock but or something. That's if a player gets traded, suddenly you can get shirts really, really cheap. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. And that's, that, that's, that's something cool with replica hockey shirts is that when they sell the, the player shirts with the, you know, the block, that they stitch, that they stitch, it, it looks really premium. Yes, but that also, I have my Carolina Hurry Her Hurricanes. I bought it in the first year that had a uh, Reebok in the arena. And I got the tackle to like three layers, all stitched. It's a very heavy number. And oh. then just in 2017, I, when I got all the Reebok shirts because they were on sale, now they're all one thin layer. And they... Oh. And they um, fold, I mean, they, they get wrinkled very easily. I mean, you wear them and they're not straight anymore, which is, I, 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 find, wow. I find this very disappointing because that is uh, cheapening. I mean, if this is, I know I have an American football shirt uh, that I bought from the Carolina Panthers, where you could, could, could get in three versions. You could get the really cheap replica with just uh, printed on. Then I took the next version up, which is exactly one layer number, but it's at least stitched and it will hold. That's why I decided on it. And then you could get the, um, yeah, on the match version uh, where you could put shoulder pads under, uh, where then it's really heavy, which, yeah, I, I don't need because I have one of these and it just looks ridiculous because, you know, the shirt suddenly <laughs> you have a lot yeah. of things here. Uh, but there was at least a price difference. But for these hockey shirts, they charge the same thing for the cheaper numbers. <laughs> and I, yeah, find this, I, find this, really, I find this absolutely unfair. <laughs> but now, now I have a question. Um, because in France, uh, getting a, a hockey shirt, even w in the Reebok era, uh, era, was quite hard. It was way more expensive than in the US, perhaps yes. due to import. Yes. Uh, is it in Austria? Is it? Same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. The NHL has an NHL Germany store where you can buy imported, but it's not all the teams. That there are certain sellers that do sell them, but um, I, I would say they are about ten percent more expensive. Um, but at least you could get the Adidas. You cannot get them in store anymore. I do remember in the nineties, and this was so. It was so cool. We, I went, uh, there was the local sports store where I got most of my first couple of shirts and they were selling really the NHL jerseys there as well. And I remember the famous Arizona Coyotes design and the one thing, the Pittsburgh Penguins, the black shirt with the robot, I have it now. And they've had it with 68 Jager and I was, I was in love with this shirt. And then I found it in 2008 on eBay. It's not my size. I found it on eBay. I bought it with Lemieux, even better for me. And this was such a feeling because this was a shirt I have been after for such a long time and finally yeah. have it. <laughs> well, it's, it's what happened when my parents bought me the Mighty Ducks uh, shirt in Caen, which is <laughs> like, which is a small town. Mm -hmm. um, there was a local sports store, which does not exist anymore. Yes. Um, and they had like, 15 20 nhl shirts it, it 
it was crazy. Yes. And it was it was a funny uh, shop because so it was a, a shopping street mm -hmm. and there was one part and one other, you know, the same the same shop, one part on one side for um, winter sports, so skiing, okay. hockey and everything, yep. and the other one with team sports, so rugby, football, mm -hmm. uh, basketball and everything. And it was the same. For football, they had all the replicas you could find. And unfortunately, today, it, it, there, still have, there still are a few shops like this, but when football they... When If there's a World Cup, I can get at least all the teams that people in Austria are interested in, which is a wide range. Uh, I can get that. I can get the big teams. I could go to a store and look at the shirts, sometimes even the authentic ones. They are just way too outpriced. What I really find sad is that for since two years, you cannot get any local teams more in a local store because it's all going to 11 team sports. Oh, yeah. This I, is I, I, really, really sad because, you know, there was at least a store close to my work. I could go check out the latest last shirts and the entire range. I could go buy it, wait until they done, get the last shirt, whatever. Can, uh, and that was, they had a contract and then they went with 11 teams, but same if for the other uh, Linz team. Uh, and uh, I think it's only one small team and the hockey team doesn't even do that anymore. And uh, don't even look for uh, Rapid, Red Bull, Salzburg, or anything like that. You cannot find this anywhere. Even in Vienna, I think there's only one or two stores where you could get uh, soccer jerseys, and the only thing you'll get is Rapid in Austria, Vienna. Really? Mm -hmm. That's that's really, yeah, I, I hate it. At least, for example, in Toulouse, there is uh, a shop, well, It's national, you know. You have you you have a few. They also have a, a website. It's called Espace Food. Yeah. Uh, and you have Food Corner as well. Uh, they do have uh, many teams. Espace Food have a bit more, but at least they have like four or five La Liga teams. Um, they have like say four or five for each league, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, plus plus shoe, plus boots plus balls plus uh, yeah. track suits. It's nice, you know, it's not what I collect, so I don't visit them anymore. But now, when I was um, 14, uh, uh, an Espace food shop opened in Caen. It's, 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 mm -hmm. It does not exist anymore, but it opened in Caen. And I was crazy. Like, the first time I mm -hmm. opened it, I'm in, I'm in Caen, and I can buy a, a River Plate shirt. I can buy a, a Boca Junior shirt, any kind of printing. It was, it was so mad. It's something that I miss. Really, but I another thing I do miss, and that ended in the late 90s here in Austria. There used to be one, it was called Fan, Fan Shop Strobel. This was one guy in Vienna, they had one store where they sold soccer shirts from all over the world, but also the entire Austrian league. And I still remember oh. once visiting it, and I saw a 94 ah. red Lusk shirt with the Adidas style that uh, Spain and France had at the time. And I didn't buy it. And I kicked myself for that. I mean, I didn't have really the funds, but I wanted to have, the, I still want to have that one. Uh, and these guys at every home game or every away game, they were with their own little cart. They were coming oh. in front of the stadium. You could get them all the current shirts of the teams that were playing there. You could get scars, but you got all the big teams, and all the scars. I bought so many scars from them from all kinds of Italian teams. Because they were just there and this was so much fun. And then they started with the fans shops where then all, all the club wanted to sell their own stuff. And those guys were, and then it was even said in the stadium, please don't spend your money with the traveling uh, uh, fan shop guys. Please spend it with us. Yeah. <laughs> and and if, you, if, if, if you ever visit Rome, there is still one shop which does this. It's called, they have a website as well. It's called well, Calcio Italia, I think. Uh -huh. uh, it's really simple. Uh, I should find it. I, I find the link. Mm -hmm. And it's and it, it's one, I think it's one of the latest shop in Western Europe that does that. Uh, when you enter and you, they, sometimes they, they have a rack onto which they have shirts from 2002. I mean, I, I, I when I visited was 2016. They had The Italian shirt, brand new with tags from 2002. So of course it's not cheap, but yeah. they 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 had pretty much everything. Like I was 
I was a child, I, I was a child entering the, the shop and I was, they had everything. And I saw my first visit in Rome was 2005. Mm-hmm. So that's when I, I, I started following Roma. And I, we, we walked past that shop and I saw the Milan 2004, 2005 with Shevchenko on the back and the player issue. That was the first time in my life that I saw a player issue in a, in a window and a, behind the window, behind the glass of the, of, of the store. And we, were, we, we just walked past and I was, and I saw just the inside of the shop and I was like, this shop is crazy. Yes. And, and, and so 11 years later, I, I, I went back to Rome and that time I entered the shop and I, and I said, so I, I speak a bit of Italian. So I yeah. explained that I was a collector and that, oh, if you, ha- if you are a collector, come here, see this rack. And so they showed the actual, the rack with the 2002 shirts and everything. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy to yes. actually find a physical store which has, which still has these shirts yes. for sale. And it's, it's amazing. And they still have, um, they, they have great website. Uh, I'll, I'll yeah. send the link. And uh, yeah, it's uh, if if you ever visit uh, if you ever visit Rome, go visit this store. It, it's yes. really nice. Oh, that that sounds. I mean, I I I really miss. I mean, they, 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 this was kind of uh, part of the rite of passage of preparing for a World Cup or a Euro Tour tournament. Go to the local sports store and check out the shirts. Yeah, but I remember in two thousand six, yeah. I the local sports store. I watched all the shirts there, and I said, hmm. No, the Italian one I don't like. I'm not buying this time Italy. <laughs> Woe me. I really like, but the, but the ones that I really like, uh, France and Japan look really good. Yeah. I did not end up buying any of these. And yeah, the, the ones that I got at that World Cup then was, I, I was visiting, uh, I was watching the Spain games in the group stage. I got an Australia shirt, I got a Spain away, but uh, yeah, I could yeah. have, should, 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 should have gotten a few more. <laughs> but this, this, the, the Espace Food Shop that I'm talking about, which yep. opened in Caen, opened in the pre-World Cup month, uh, like May 2006, yes. and um, it was Perfect it was time. crazy to enter enter the shop and see all the teams: Netherlands, yep. Brazil. For, for for a guy who who was already into uh, football shirts, but who lived in Caen, where you could you couldn't find anything anymore, entering a shop and saying. Oh my God! I can buy any shirt that I want, or ask my parents to 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 gift uh, any shirt that I want. I'm like, okay, I love the France shirts, but the Korea one is cool, the Brazil one is cool. Oh, you can have any printing you want. Oh my God, what, what yes. am I going to decide? I, I I miss that thrill, you know. It's something yeah, yeah. that we're not going to get anymore. But it's yeah, I love it. No, for um, uh, for me, the only other moment where like a whole new world. Unfortunately, this is not a current world. Open for me was in 2003 when I realized, or oh, no, it was actually 2000 when I ordered from France catalog order this, the 2000 shirt with the Zidane printing on, on, on yeah. the back. So, this is so cool. I got this directly from France because you couldn't get Zidane printing here. Yeah. Uh, but then in 2003, I, it clicked in me suddenly. There are fan stores for Milan and for Roma. And let's check out Kievo because I'm fine. And suddenly I'm ordering all the shirts from Italy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in 2003, you had the internet. Yes. Okay, I did not. So you know, uh, we had, uh, had internet uh, since 1998, I want to say. We had internet. Oh, okay, okay. But it was okay, still the really old, late. you know, ding, 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 <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I had I, I had this one, but like uh, six years later. Yeah, my yeah. parents were quite late in terms of technology. So I, at least that we had. Uh, but this was for me. A, wow, you can do this on the internet. You can. I don't need to wait until I see a Milan shirt uh, here. I can actually get it, and I can get the black Roma shirt. I mean, I was so, because usually I buy the home 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 shirts, but I, it was a time and I uh, told you about the Madrid shirt. They were really like black shirts. And then I had the black cup of wow. And then with Totti on the back, great. And then yeah. it was the 95th anniversary match between Lask and Roma. It was my last, like, last game that I watched before I went to America. And it was the only last game where I went with the Roma, sh- where I went with the other team because I had the black Totti shirt with Lask scarf. It was just that then Totti also scored yeah. the winning penalty. And they were, they were, 
in terms of manufacturing, they were really fragile, though. The camera yeah. shirts, they were horrible. Well, like, think... From that season, from, you have the black from 2002, 2003, yes. right? But I have the other two. Yeah. Uh, I, have, I don't have the white one, but I have the home shirt. So player issue, so made in Italy, with mm-hmm. no sponsor, in great condition as well. And I have the European one, so red and yellow on the I have that one too. Is, it's gorgeous. It, I absolutely love that one. I mean, the mine that I got during the pandemic, it's pretty beaten up. The guy was clearly very, very there. It's this little hole above the logo, and he stitched here on the collar, and then there's a hole on the seam below. Yeah. I, I, not, I'm, I'm lucky. Yeah. But it's not I'm a... It's still good, I have to say. Yeah. But I, I'm lucky because the, the Roma shirts from Kappa that I have are pristine condition. Yeah. And it's really hard to find. This one is a Toti Match one, by, by the way. Oh, cool. Um, it's in, in a friendly. Sorry, I'm taking that off. <laughs> it was worn in a friendly by Francesco Totti. So here you have the, the oh, number 10. Yeah. And it's. Um, for Kappa shirts, it's really subtle, you know, how you define, how you recognize a player shirt. Mm-hmm. It was made in Italy, and the, the, the body composition was different. So you have it um, made in Italy. Oh, you, you, won't, you won't see it, I think. It's, it's really in the, in the stitching. Yeah. And yeah. 87 polyamide and 13% liquor. Uh, yeah. That's the way you recognize a player shirt. Yeah. They had different versions. I have a Vucinic match worn shirt from that year as well, mm-hmm. but it's not made in Italy. The long sleeves were made in Romania. Yeah. But this one and the and, and the, the printing is really thin. You know, it's it's really different from what you could get in store. And uh yeah. The printing That's I have on the one that I is also very thin because it came off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had, I had it folded up for years in the big because I didn't I didn't hang my shirts initially. So I went to America with all my shirts. And I had mm. them folded up and piled. And then the Totti print printed on the shirt. And it took me then uh, uh, two hours with alcohol swaps to get this off. And so the yeah. printing is... Uh, I, it, it happened. Uh, now I, that's what I did a, a, a few months ago. Uh, I decided that all the shirts that had printings, I would hang them. Uh, yeah. I only keep folded the, the shirts without printings. Uh, on the contrary, which is weird, is that in 2000. The great era, like 2000, 2000, 2001 and 2001, 2002, the printings of the players were in kind of, were, um, uh, no, 2007, when they were back with Kappa, mm-hmm. the player, what you could buy in store was kind of a thin plastic. Yeah. The player had kind of a rubberized printing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a Tadei match worn from that era mm-hmm. uh, and it's uh, yeah it's, it's really really different from what you could get in stores but you know that's what we were talking about before when you buy a replica shirt you wouldn't you, you couldn't you wouldn't see the difference yes with, and, and the difference were just in terms of comfort and everything mm-hmm. and so you would be satisfied buying a shirt in the store because it would actually look the same and, Absolutely. and that, that was nice yeah really nice Yes, yes. So it's I, I, I by the way love the wind sponsor. I I do remember when I got yeah. together with my wife. Uh, I was always showing her, you know, this is a shirt that I would like to get, and I always showed her the Roma shirt, and for some reason I never got it. But she, I really like this with the wind, and she I would have her approval, but I didn't get the shirt. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think I got I uh, got a Milan shirt then. Uh, there was something I don't know why it never ma- ma- materialized. Uh, but I really love the wind. The, the, it's such a cl- super nice looking sponsor. Yeah, it, it looks nice. It re- it really looks nice. Especially the blue um, works so well with the. Yeah, and, and, and usually I'm really not a fan of color clashing like this. Yes. 